Hello friends, it's Kat from Yam Yam Kapow. It's Animal Artist Collective time again. If you aren't familiar with the Animal Artist Collective, we're a group here on YouTube who are passionate about animals, art conservation, and art. Every other month we create a piece of artwork in traditional mediums and put the original up for sale with at least half of the price being donated to charity. There's plenty more information down in the doobly-doo, including links to all the materials I used in this piece, the charity I'll be supporting with this, information on the AAC, and links to all the other official members' channels. We've even got our own playlist. I'd like to shout out a super warm welcome to our newest member, Mary Sanche. I'm totally blown away by her gouache work, and the fact that she has a ton of dinosaur toys all over her house just adds bonus points. Anyway, the theme for this month was urban animals, and as I hope you can see by now, I've chosen raccoons. Why? Because I just really love trash pandas? No deeper thought went into it. Literally from the very moment I found out urban animals was even a possibility, this image immediately came to me and I needed to make it. The disadvantage to that being that I had no idea what to talk about, and figured that since raccoons are so common, there's really nothing interesting or endangered about them. But there is. First of all, there is a species of raccoon, the Cozumel or pygmy raccoon, that is actually critically endangered right now with less than 250 of them living only on an island off the coast of Mexico. Their habitat, the mangrove forest, is being destroyed entirely by tourism. Since this breed only exists on that one island, the tearing down of the forest and the development of the land for more sightseeing purposes is completely destroying the species. Interestingly enough, the introduction of cats as pets that then breed and give birth to what become feral cats also has significantly decreased the population. This entire scenario is actually especially unusual and concerning when you compare it to the state of raccoons across the world. In many countries, raccoons are either only really thought of at night when the trash cans begin to clank together, or they're a complete and utter pest. It turns out, raccoons are not native to almost everywhere that you can find them nowadays. This incredibly adaptive creature started its life in deciduous forests, but can now be found worldwide in coasts, urban areas, forests. Sometimes you can feel like it's hard to go 100 feet at night without seeing one. A lot of places that they were brought to deliberately in the 20th century actually have no natural predators of raccoons, so aside from that one island where they're quickly dying out, Raccoons often have explosive and overwhelming populations. One thing that I found fascinating about raccoons while researching them for this video, because I really had no idea where to start, was their hands. If you watch a video of a raccoon eating, you might not notice it at first, but they don't really look at their food. Instead, what they do is use their hands to touch the food and feel their way around it. Their hands are about as sensitive as the humans, and they like to feel things to really get a sense of them. Weirdly, it's also theorized that water somehow enhances the sensitivity of raccoons' hands, which is why they can catch fish just by dangling their paws into the water while appearing to look elsewhere. Their reflexes are fast, and the sensitivity in their paws means that they trust their hands to know what to do without using their eyes as a backup. There are also videos of raccoons dunking food into water and doing what most would assume is cleaning the food because they like to be tidy. Recent thoughts, however, are that the reason a raccoon will dunk its food into water, if water is available, is to use its super sensitive magic water fingers to really investigate what it is they're working with to see if there are any hidden treasures or any hidden dangers. From a young age, raccoons are taught to rely on their sense of touch as they are born both deaf and blind, which sort of leads me to wonder just how much hearing and eyesight they have in comparison to their sense of touch. Does anyone know about this? I'm actually really curious to learn more about raccoons, but all the information online is basically the same. Oh, and by the way, whenever I look at trash pandas, I always love their tiny people hands, but it turns out they don't have thumbs. They don't have people hands at all. They just have crazy long fingers on tiny little palms and are super great at grabbing things two-handed, but not one-handed. It's crazy to think that I've been surrounded by raccoons for my entire life, and when it came down to writing information about them, all I could come up with was, I don't know, I like them because they're cute. I think if there was better animal education, some of this stuff wouldn't have come as a surprise to me. I only just barely scratched the surface, and I bet at least one thing about what I said came as a surprise to at least one person. Shout out to whoever learned something this week, because I sure did! 
That's why I'd like to support the Schuylkill Center for Environmental Education, a local wildlife and environmental education center that also helps heal and rehabilitate animals in its clinic and its 340-acre multi-biomed space. Finding out about the rainforests being destroyed when I was a kid is what made me a certified tree hugger, and I'd love for there to be more people whose hearts are shaped by empathy for animals. As for this illustration, I don't know what it is about these AAC videos that makes me go super far off the deep end and make crazy things that I love, but that also challenge me, but this is probably the most detailed scene I've built to date. Some of my favorite parts of this painting are the details themselves, like the little sticky note behind the counter, and the one character in the background reaching for the syrup from the other table because they need it for their pancakes, or the stereotypically mangled Venetian blinds. I also took a page out of my own book and did a wash of cobalt teal in the background to tie it all together, something I've been experimenting with in the diner doodles I often post on my Instagram page. The whole piece was created using M. Graham watercolors, brown India ink, 100% cotton paper from Fluid, and my Escoda watercolor brushes. Even though the paper warped a bit after the heavy wash I applied to it here, it actually dried completely flat, so I'm totally impressed. The paints, in particular, are extra special to me because three of the four colors used were given to me as a gift by fellow YouTuber Arlie Bean. The only color I added was some quinacridone rose, also from Amgram, because I knew for sure that the uniform of the raccoon waitress needed to be pink. Even still, this was made using a wonderfully limited palette of Pyrrhal Scarlet, Bismuth Yellow, Cobalt Teal, and Quin Rose. I've talked before about how I really love the way my work comes out when I use limited palette, and this is no exception. These colors together really give a nice contrast between warm and cool elements, and I'd highly recommend you give this combination a shot if you get the chance. It may seem unusual at first, but I hope the results manage to speak for themselves here. Also, a note about that Totoro inkwell you saw me use in the beginning. That's something I made for myself a few years ago because I'm clumsy and tend to knock things over, so I needed a very stable inkwell while working with dip pens. If you watched any of my Inktober videos from 2017, you may very well recognize it. I'm sorry to say that it's not available for purchase, though I've been considering making another and sharing with you all the process. If you're interested in purchasing this original artwork while it's available and helping to support wildlife education, the doobly-doo is chock full of all the information you need to do so, along with the materials and links to my fellow artists. If you'd like to support the cause in other ways, please share our videos and playlists, subscribe to our channels, and take at least one step more towards helping make the world around you a kinder and more eco-friendly place. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and pilfered ketchup bottles. Bye!